Okay, here I'm at, at the very beginning. So my word was rumble, and I picked Myriad Pro, a pretty basic font. This is a kind of a cool font too, this bungee. So for me, I wanted to have something that had like some weight to it, some structure. You know, I wouldn't want to use like a script font or a thin font. That's why I want to use this really heavy sans serif font for this type of exercise. So here I have the word rumble. I have my layers palette here. I'm going to go back into the layers and, you know, I'd like to have the layers nice and big like this. Now I want to add that kind of um, broken up effect, you know, that signify the word rumbling has actually been rumbled, or, you know, you could say, or maybe the word is broken or shattered, something like that. So rumble, but rumble is like the sound is, has a feel that has that onomatopoeia feel to it too, the way you say rumble you know, rumble, you know, how you say it conveys the meaning and the visual way to convey the meaning as well as what we're going to do. Here, I'm going to take the word rumble. I'm going to convert it to outline. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to type, uh, create outlines. So I want to create outlines. And then I want to create my stripes for this um, font to go across it. And the stripes are going to basically allow me to use the pathfinder down here to break the font up into pieces. So to do that, I'm going to create another layer, create new layer. I'm going to lock down rumble. So I'm going to click next to it. So I have that little lock and I'm going to go into that layer on top. And then I'm going to create a rectangle, like a thin rectangle. So I'm using the rectangle tool and then I'll give it a color. So I'm double clicking on the fill swatch here and I'll give it a color. And then what you can do now is um, the shortcut for move is V. So if I want to have that move to tool selected, I can hit V or just click on the very first black arrow. It's my selection tool. So direct selection tool is actually like my move tool as well. We always call it the, um, you know, these tools, selection and direct selection. So if I double click on the selection tool, what happens is it brings up the move um, um, dialog box. So I'm going to cancel that and I'll do it again because we didn't do this in class. So I'll do it again. So um, double click and it brings up move. And so what I can do is I can look at this rectangle and I can look at my control bar on top and the first number here, 29, that's the width. So this rectangle is 29 pixels wide. So if I want to have equal stripes of different alternating colors, what I want to do is I want to move this um, twice that distance of 29. So um, 29 times uh, 2 is 58. So I want to move this 58 pixels. So what I can do in the move dialog box here under distance, I'll say 58. And you have to make sure previews turned on so you can see what you're doing. And for my angle, I want to put zero because I don't want to I just want it to move from left to right. So I don't want any angle. Let me click that again. Um, oh, position two, I want it to be positive. So I'm going to get rid of that negative sign. So now it moved 58 pixels to the right. But if you hit this copy button, it basically creates a duplicate. I hit copy. So it created a duplicate of the original um, rectangle and it moved it over. I have my rectangle. I double click on the black arrow, the selection tool. It brings up this move dialog and I figure out how wide it is. And then I just hit copy. So it's 29 pixels wide. So I wanted to do the distance to be, I want the distance to be twice that much. So I hit copy. Now I have a copy and then I can hit control D a bunch of times and it duplicates that copy that many times. So I'm hitting control D. Oh. So control D basically moves each one of those lines an equal amount of distance. Yeah. And I'm doing this in a separate layer, right? I don't want to really mess up my type yet. Mm -hmm. So then what I can do is I can grab all these rectangles and then I'm going to hit um, alt and shift and I'm just going to drag. I'm just going to like, it should like, if you have snap turned on, it should snap into place. And now I have a duplicate of those initial rectangles. And if the duplicate is still selected, 
Uh -huh. I'll click, double click my fill and I'll just, just give this a different color. Uh -huh. I'll give it like something contrasting, hit OK. Now I have red and green and they're all on this um, top layer. OK, so once I have these rectangles all set, I'll grab them all again. And then I will go into the shear tool. Uh -huh. So you just click on the shear tool. It's underneath the scale tool. It's right here. And I'm just click and I'll just kind of drag a little bit. So now I have these diagonal rectangles like that. Okay. Oh, that's cool. So it create, it's kind of, yeah, it's like the simultaneous contrast type pattern. So visually it's like really, really interesting actually. Um, so this is all set uh, for what I want to do. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to actually select, make sure everything is still selected. I'm going to copy it. Um, actually I'll do control X and that is cut. Um, let's see. So I'm going to grab them all, hit Control X. Um, I'm going to go to the, the layer that had that word rumble in it. I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to hit Control B and that pastes behind. So I took all those diagonal lines and I pasted it behind that word rumble. The next thing I want to do is. Um, <coughs> go into that first layer here. I'm going to open it up. So I want to be able to see um, everything that's going on in this layer. And I just want to be able to find that word rumble. And I'm going to click the dot next to it. And it only selects that um, word. So the next step is kind of important. What you want to do now is you want to take these letters that are all selected. And you want to go into object. And you want to go into compound path. And you want to hit make. Um, so it's going to turn this into a compound path, but after you do that, it, you can no longer see the letters. They kind of disappear. I can just see the outline, which is fine. So I want just to see this outline and then I'm going to go back to my selection tool. I'm going to select everything and then I'll go into my pathfinder. You go to, in the window, um, pathfinder and I want to click, um, the one that's the fourth from the uh, left here on the bottom is crop. I want to click on that and it basically took my word and it cropped out all the stripes that were outside of that word. So now <laughs> if I select it uh -huh. and I go into object and I ungroup it, I'm going to ungroup it. Now I have all these stripes as individual pieces that I can like pull out and do what I want with. Um, but I can do a couple of things now. So to get that jumble effect, I can select one of them because now they're all individual pieces. If, if you don't ungroup it, you select it and you're just going to select everything. So now that they're un, now that they're individual pieces, um, you can go into select and you go same um, and stroke and it's only selecting the green now. And what I can do is I can, with my arrow keys on the keyboard, I'm going to use my arrow keys. I'm going to um, type the left arrow a couple times, um, a couple clicks to the left, and the up, up arrow a couple clicks to the right. So now they're offset. So now I have this offset effect. To actually get that rumble effect, what you can do is you can grab everything, and then you can go into object, transform, and transform each. And this is another reason why you want, want to ungroup it. So if I go into transform each, you can see it already kind of jumbled it up because they already have settings in here. I'm going to click off preview. So what you can do is you can play with these settings. You can play with scale, horizontal, vertical, rotate. You just want to do it in like really small increments. You don't want to do it too crazy, but the key to getting this to really work is to click on random. If you don't click on random, everything's going to move in the same kind of uniform way. Why don't you click on random? And I, the angle is too crazy. I got to lower that. Like, the, to, uh, it was too much. So I'm going to go back into uh, transform each. You know, maybe like 13 degrees, you know. So just a little bit. So I'll unclick it and then click it. And um, you can play with your horizontal movement, vertical movement. Um, and that should be good, but it gives you this kind of like broken up effect. 
So it kind of looks like a candy cane a little bit. But, um, but yeah, that's using the different types of tools in Illustrator to get that kind of visual resonance. You know, so, so the, the actual look and feel of the typography reflects the word that you're trying to use.